This is a video for Trump supporters, MAGA Republicans, and the last few remaining old school conservatives who haven't had the time to do any fact checking about your favorite president. Donald Trump tells you the economy was better under him, but it wasn't. He tells you there were no wars during his presidency, but there were. He tells you that the border was secure under him, but it wasn't. In fact, there's a bunch of other stuff that he claimed that also wasn't true, like COVID would just go away in a few days and that he wanted the cleanest air and the cleanest water and that he had no ties to Russia. All of that stuff is proven to be a lie. But let's just focus on the top three issues for now, the economy, war and immigration. If you're still watching, then credit to you for being open to facts and data and not just blindly supporting someone who just makes up numbers. Have you noticed that whenever Trump talks about the numbers, they're always different numbers? Like, like he's just making them up? Like $85 billion of equipment was left behind in Afghanistan. The $85 billion figure resembles the number that the US has invested to train and build and equip Afghan security forces for 23 years, since 2001. $82 billion was spent on that, not on the gear that he says was left behind. And even if it was true, much of the military equipment would be obsolete after its use. Troops have scrapped unwanted gear, they've disabled dozens of Humvees and aircraft so they couldn't be used again, and everything else was taken out of there. And incidentally, the withdrawal from Afghanistan was Trump's plan. It wasn't Joe Biden's plan, and as evacuations go, it was pretty well executed by military standards. Let's deal with the issue of there being no war during Trump's presidency. Well, that is patently false. The US has a hand in multiple conflicts around the world, including Yemen, Ukraine, Syria, Cameroon, Iraq, Egypt, Kenya, Lebanon, Libya, Mali. Mauritania, Niger, Nigeria, Somalia, and Afghanistan. All conflicts during Donald Trump's presidency. He famously didn't read security briefings, so maybe he didn't even know about them. And I'm not even joking when I say that. Maybe he just thought they were shithole countries and had nothing to do with him. So let's now talk about the economy. And again, here Donald Trump has selective memory. If you compare key economic indicators from Barack Obama's second term in office to the first three years of Donald Trump's time, that is before the pandemic hit, the data shows a continuation of trends, not a dramatic shift. It suggests that Trump didn't build anything new economically. Rather, he inherited a pretty good situation. Start with the broadest measure of economic health, gross domestic product. In 2016, Donald Trump said he was unhappy that the country's economic growth rate was under 3% a year. Trump said he thought the economy could grow at better than 4% as an annual rate. But the numbers show that average quarterly economic growth under Donald Trump was 2.5%, almost exactly what it was under Barack Obama in the second term. Job numbers for Obama and Trump show a similar story. Donald Trump rightfully takes credit for having low unemployment during his presidency. In December of 2019, the unemployment rate was 3.5%, the lowest it had been in 50 years. Obama saw a much steeper drop in unemployment in his second term, a 3.3 drop in the rate, than Trump did in his first three years a decline of 1.2 points. That is not to besmirch the remarkably low unemployment under Trump, but it's hard to ignore that the unemployment track under Barack Obama had been downward. And the job creation numbers show more evidence for that view. For example, there were more jobs added monthly in Barack Obama's second term than there were in Donald Trump's first three years. And then, of course, along came the pandemic, when a third of jobs were lost again. Fortunately, Trump lost the election, and it was Joe Biden who had to clear up the mess. As Bill Clinton said at the DNC recently, since the end of the Cold War in 1989, America has created around 51 million new jobs. What's the score? 
Democrats 50, Republicans 1. And here's another metric. A new pair of studies from the nonpartisan Penn Wharton budget model suggests that Trump's plan to permanently extend the 2017 tax cuts would add more than $4 trillion to deficits over the next 10 years. His proposal to eliminate taxes on Social Security benefits comes with a $1.2 trillion price tag, while his pledge to further reduce corporate taxes would add nearly $6 billion. Remember, on The Apprentice, Donald Trump played the role of a successful businessman. At the time, he wasn't one. His six company bankruptcies were the result of over-leveraged hotel and casino businesses in Atlantic City and New York. And with the help of the banks and his father, who repeatedly gave him money, Trump managed to escape the humiliation of personal bankruptcy. But his days as an entrepreneur were done. For a decade or more, he largely confined himself to licensing deals, entertainment ventures and minority investments that cashed in on his personal Trump brand, which somehow survived his dramatic fall from grace. Until the job came along that changed all that, a TV show called The Apprentice. Off the back of that show, he told you that he was rich and successful and he won the presidency as an outsider. But his business acumen never materialised. Just look at his Truth Social stock. It's tanking. And if you want to judge him on his most recent business venture, this is it. It's a Wall Street sob story. Trump owes hundreds of millions in court fines and lawsuit costs. He's hoping for a Truth Social payday because right now he doesn't have any cash. Trump owns more than 60% of the publicly traded company, a total of around 114 million shares, which are now worth a third of their original value. And if you thought he spent his own money on political campaigns, forget it. He begs for support from those who can hardly afford it. He's rinsing MAGA Republicans of their savings to pay his legal bills. Trump also illegally grifted off the presidency. He made up to $160 million from international business dealings while he was serving as President of the United States. Throughout his time in office, Trump, his family and his Republican allies repeatedly assured the public that his refusal to divest from his businesses wouldn't lead to any conflicts of interest. Americans were promised that Trump would donate his presidential salary, which he did, until maybe he didn't all while siphoning millions from taxpayers that more than offset his presidential pay. In 2019, Trump stunned the US foreign policy establishment by pulling US troops out of northeastern Syria. The decision had no obvious benefits to the US and was a, a bombshell reversal to allied Kurds, but it was a victory for Turkey, where Donald Trump had done business for years. The Trump family took advantage of the presidency to revive dormant old deals, revisiting projects in countries like India, Uruguay and the Dominican Republic. The Trumps were openly engaging in multiple international business deals and let the world know they'd hoped to continue expanding internationally after Donald Trump left office. It's no secret that Trump was struggling financially before he announced his run for office. His tax returns show that the presidency was great for his bank account. So all that stuff about donating his $400,000 salary, that was a drop in the ocean. All smoke and mirrors. Now, let's address his claims that the border was secure under him and that President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris want open borders. Neither of those statements are true. The Border Patrol recorded 41% more successful illegal entries in 2019 than in 2016 and was on pace for 47% more through the four months of 2020. As he left office in January, reports indicate that the numbers reached even greater heights. Government officials and the media typically measure border security by the number of people apprehended or arrested by Border Patrol. Well, the Trump border policy had a single-minded focus. Keep out asylum seekers. Don't let them seek asylum. Despite the fact that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 14, which states that everyone has the right to seek and enjoy asylum from persecution in other countries. Donald Trump ignored that. After first separating families at the border and then attempting to ban asylum completely, Trump started returning asylum seekers to Mexico to await hearings in homeless camps on the other side of the border. 
This led to a wave of crimes against immigrants. Some were kidnapped, others raped and some murdered. When the pandemic hit, the government suspended all hearings for those already returned to Mexico and began expelling all others with no hearing at all. It was inevitable that the opportunity to obtain asylum completely disappeared, or the costs to do so increased, such as through family separation. A greater percentage of people would attempt to sneak around these ports of entry, so Donald Trump effectively made illegal border crossings worse because of his policies. A March 2021 review of the Trump border wall found only 47 miles of new barriers where none had previously existed. While Trump had described the wall as virtually impenetrable, it was found that smugglers had repeatedly soared through the wall with cheap power tools. You can see videos of people climbing the wall using fabric and rope and ladders. After a temporary lull in migration during the early part of the pandemic, that very month, October 2020, saw a significant jump in both known successful entries, what Border Patrol call gotaways, as well as arrests to levels as high as before the pandemic. And the numbers kept rising. Even before Joe Biden assumed office, the Border Patrol was making more arrests and witnessing far more successful crossings after the wall went up than most months before Trump's wall was even thought of. Build the wall was a rally cry symbolism, racism, xenophobia. It didn't actually work. The design was flawed. Whereas Ronald Reagan was calling for walls to be torn down, Donald Trump was building them up. America should be building bridges, not walls. Trump, from a family of immigrants, married to an immigrant, used hateful rhetoric to blame migrants for everything, claiming they're rapists and stealing jobs and bringing drugs, when none of that is true. And of course, hate crime went up and, and people died, courtesy of his offensive language and lies. Now, President Biden doesn't have any unique border policies, really. He's maintained virtually everything that was in place when Donald Trump first stood in front of the wall back in January 2021 and declared victory. He continued to expel as many asylum seekers in Mexico as Mexico would take, even larger numbers in absolute terms than Donald Trump did. As of December 2020, the total funding given for new fencing was about $15 billion, a third of which had been given by Congress whilst Trump had ordered the rest to be taken from the military budget. You see, Donald Trump didn't make America great again. It was already great. He just told you it wasn't. Because he's a master manipulator who would rather lie about stuff than actually do any work. So if your memory is of America being better and more prosperous under Donald Trump, the data tells a completely different story. It's just that you can only remember the story that Trump has been telling you. That's mind control. That's coercion, brainwashing. Possibly the only thing he's good at. I'm Anthony Davis. You can catch me on the 5 Minute News YouTube channel and podcast on Wednesdays co-hosting Uncovered and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.